Hope you are preparing well for the upcoming board examination. Today, we are going to do the revision of chapter 5, Periodic Classification of Elements. There are 118 elements in the periodic table. In 1913, Henry Mosley classified the elements in the increasing order of their atomic numbers. The first element is hydrogen with atomic number 1 and now the 118 element, 118th element is organoson and now the periodic table is complete. When we go through the periodic table, there are horizontal rows. Seven horizontal rows are there called periods and vertical columns are called groups. There are 18 groups. The first group is this, second group, third group and so on till the 18th group. Let us see the first group. Hydrogen, Lithium, Sodium, Potassium, Rubidium, Cesium and Francium. That first group is called Alkali Metals. Actually, Hydrogen is not a metal, but it is included in the first group. Second group is Beryllium, Magnesium, Calcium, Strontium, Barium and Radium. They are included in the Alkaline Earth Metals. Then you can see 3rd to 12th group. They are called transition elements. Another name is D block elements. Then you can see the boron family. The members are boron, aluminium, gallium, indium and thallium. Then carbon family. Members are carbon, silicon, germanium, tin and lead. Now, in the carbon family, you can see fluorobium is also there. Next is nitrogen family. Nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony and bismuth. Oxygen family. Oxygen, Sulphur, Selenium, Tellurium and Polonium. Then Halogens, Fluorine, Chlorine, Bromine, Iodine and Astatine. And 18th group, we are called Noble Gases. Helium, Neon, Argon, Krypton, Xenon and Radon. Here, Organoson is also added. All these groups, group members, show similarity in their properties. Each group members shows the similarity in their properties. So when you learn about sodium, we can predict the properties of other elements in that group. Just like that, Suppose you are studying about halogens. What is the meaning of halogens? I give sea salt. You know sodium chloride is a salt we are getting from sea water. Here, what is the speciality of noble gases? Noble gases are inert gases. Here, the speciality is helium is having only one shell. And it is completed. K shell. It is completed with the two electrons. All the other elements, they have eight electrons in their outermost shell. That is, they have completed the octet. Then, now we will uh, study about the electronic configuration of elements. First, we can go through a group. 
the first group. How will you write the electronic configuration? For that we have to study the shell and how many electrons can be accommodated in each shell. First, this is the nucleus of an atom. Protons are there and the neutrons are there. Electrons are revolving around the nucleus. The first shell is A shell, then L shell, then M shell, then next is N shell. K shell is the first shell, L second shell, M third shell, N fourth shell and so on. Here, an equation is there, 2 into n square. 2 into n square where n is the shell number from the nucleus. So, k shell is 1. The number is 1 from the nucleus. In k shell, 2 into 1 square. That is 2 into 1 is equal to 2. So, K shell can accommodate maximum 2 electrons. Next is L shell. 2 into 2 square. That is 2 into 4 is equal to 8. L shell can accommodate 8 electrons. M shell. 2 into 3 square. That is 2 into 9 is equal to 18. Then next we will learn how to write the electronic configuration of elements. Hydrogen. Atomic number is 1. Its electronic configuration is 1. Because it has only K shell. K shell can accommodate. Two electrons, but here only one electron for hydrogen, so one electron goes to K shell. Then next is lithium. Three. Lithium in the first shell, the K shell two electrons can be accommodated and one electron goes to L shell. K shell, L, M, N. Here, Two electrons in K shell and one electron in L shell. Then sodium. Atomic number 11. 2. L shell can accommodate maximum 8 electron. So that one electron goes to M shell. Then potassium. Atomic number 19. 2. 8. Next Actually, it can accommodate 18 electrons in the M shell. But here, the outermost shell can accommodate only 8 electrons. So, M shell here can accommodate 8 and the 1 electron goes to N shell. Here we can see, in the first group, outermost shell contains 1 electron. Another name for most electrons is valence electron. So, one electron is there in the outermost shell. Or one valence electron is there for the first group element. Take the case of second group elements. That is alkaline earth metals. You know, the members are beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium and radium. Here, beryllium. Atomic number is 4, 2, 2. K shell 2, L shell 2. Then magnesium 12, 2, 8, 2. Then calcium 20, 2, 8, 8, 2. So in the second group, 
valence electrons are 2. These valence electrons decide their chemical properties. If in the exam, if they are asking sodium with the atomic number 11 or sometimes they will give the electronic configuration, they can ask, write the element just above sodium. Or sometimes they will give X with the atomic number 11. Then you can write electronic configuration 2H1. So just above 2H1 here, 2, 1. Or if they are asking below it, M, suppose M, 2, 8, 8, 1. Like that they can ask for the exam. About the periods. You know the first period is hydrogen and helium. Atomic number hydrogen, atomic number 1, helium atomic number 2. Then just take the second period. Lithium atomic number 3, beryllium atomic number 4, then boron atomic number 5, carbon atomic number 6, then nitrogen atomic number 7, oxygen atomic number 8, then halogen that is fluorine atomic number 9 and neon atomic number 10. This is the second period, period number 2. Here, just write the electronic configuration. Lithium 3, you know, it is 2, 1. This is 2, 2. This is 2, comma 3. Carbon 2, comma 4. Then 2, 5. Oxygen 2, 6, chlorine 2, 7, and neon 2, 8. Here, the valence electron just see, for lithium 1, beryllium 2, boron 3, carbon 4, nitrogen 5, oxygen 6, fluorine 7, and neon 8. It varies, not like in a, in a group. In, in a group, valence electrons are same, but in a period, it is changing. Next, we will study about the trends in the periodic table. Hope you have understood this topic. Trends in the modern periodic table will be continued in the next class. A questionnaire session based on the previous year's question papers will be included. Please watch and subscribe to my channel Rishi's Classes and don't forget to press the bell icon near the subscribe button for regular updates. Thank you.